Hello and welcome to lecture four of the Intro to Bit Badges course. In this course, we will be showing you around the Create tab and how you can create badges, lists, and everything else we've been talking about um, all in Site. So I want to preface this by saying that everything is in Site in a you know super easy to use form manner. Um, it is requires no technical knowledge for most of the forms, um, such as like the badge list and so on. Um, but it is extendable by people who do have technical knowledge. So for example, we have like JSON foreign inputs for um, if you want to do stuff on your own and add the JSON instead of, you know, just the more streamlined form um, user interface. So, I mean, pretty much it's no code by default, super easy to use without technical knowledge, but with technical knowledge, you can customize it further and um, have a lot of options there. So let's get into it. Um, Actually, before we get into it, let, let me just also say that a lot of the current industry is smart contract based with blockchain and crypto. So this might be a kind of refreshing point of view because, you know, you no longer need to create smart contracts for every individual token or badge or whatever you're trying to do. It's all here in the site, no code by default. So, okay, now let's get into it. Um, so we'll create a badge collection as opposed to an address list here. Um, so every badge has a manager or can have a manager, which can execute certain permissions. Typically, we recommend that a manager um, is set so you can change stuff as needed or facilitate the um, creation and updating of your collection as needed in case anything goes wrong, especially since we're in beta. Um, this can be turned off at any time, and all the permis individual permissions can be turned off at any time, but we do recommend that you do have one, at least for now. Um, so I will enable all permissions, but they're soft enabled, so they can be disabled at any time. Let's add 10 badges to our um, collection. And then here you can set certain metadata for the collection and um, the individual badges themselves. So the collection is kind of the parent entity, which so the collection will have its own page and it can, um, but then each badge will also have its own page and have its own metadata too. So. Sometimes, or typically, these might be the same. So the collection of badge made of metadata might be the exact same, but you might also customize um, one versus the other. So let's go through and let's just add some initial customization options. Um, so you can just, you know, add anything. You can customize the events, the achievements, whatever, whatever um, category I'm at and add utility, add certain socials links, add attributes, and so on. This all just gives it, you know, metadata and information about the collection itself and how we portray it, for example, in the banner, how it's uh, portrayed to users, how it's used in certain contexts, and so on. Um, so there's a form feature. There's also a JSON feature for, like I was mentioning, super easy for you to just, you know, customize it yourself. Um, the batch apply feature will also be pretty useful for you. Um, this will batch apply it to all um, badges. So for in this case, we'll batch apply our collection metadata to all badges. And as you see here, um, all the badges now have the same metadata as the collection. And you can do this per field. You can do this per um, specific badges and so on. So um, it's an easy way to batch apply metadata wherever you need. So we'll just leave it as this. Um, actually, let's just set the category to other so it doesn't show up under events. And so you can see here, we can reverse apply it. Now let's show this other here too. The next thing we want to focus on, or um, and the next decision we have to make is balance of storage. So we'll go into detail on this in the second course, but you can store your balances on chain. So this is kind of the typical way you might think about it where everything requires an approval, uh, sufficient balances on chain and transferability is dependent on chain. However, for certain use cases, you might want to define it off, off chain and you know, be a centralized server or some other, other method. There are pros and cons to each approach, but um, ultimately this is up to you and how you want to implement your collection. And there's also an on-demand um, balances type where instead of you know having a ledger of history and balances and transfers, we just check some criteria on demand. And pretty much, if you are meet that criteria, you have you know you get the balances. So if I look here, um, 
Let me just go back to the, the badges site. And you can see that the, once it loads, the, this, my first Ethereum transaction is actually that on demand type. So as you can see here, if I search like Vitalik, um, you can see he owns one of the 2015 badge because his first transaction was in 2015. And we've kind of looked this up on demand. It's not stored anywhere. It's not, um, it's just, you know, checked on demand. And we'll get into that in the second course. So let's just set it as on chain for now. Um, you can have incoming approvals. So instead of just outgoing approvals, you know, you block certain users from transferring to you. So you can make your collection opt-in only, maybe for regulation purposes, such as, you know, KYC requirement, proving that the user actually initiated the transaction, or you can make it, you know, open to um, like airdrops and stuff like that. So next we have the approvals. So all approvals are kind of the main thing with on-chain badges. You know, you can um, customize all the criteria needed to transfer badges from the um, on-chain. So as you see here, we might have this where I just approve myself to um, transfer from the mint address. So the mint address has unlimited balances. Um, that's kind of where the, the source of all circulating supply is. Um, so as you see here, if we view more, we can see all the different criteria needed to transfer the badges. So we forcefully override the recipient approvals. Um, you can see this approves transfers from the mint address and initiated by my address and pretty much anyone, any badge or any ownership time can be transferred. So you can also do that for them from the mint address. You can also transfer or set approvals like post minting. So for example, this would make the collection transferable um, with pretty much no limit or amount restrictions. Um, so yeah, certain advanced features and then you can see a preview as you see here. Um, you know, we have 10 badges. Our distribution is controlled by these approvals, as you see, and um, just tons of stuff about the badge, about the collection. Um, and yeah. So, one thing I want to note with on chain is that um, there are two different types of two, le two levels there's collection approvals. Every collection, every transfer must satisfy a collection approval. But then there's also user approvals. Oh, this is just because it's a preview. Um, it's kind of messing up, but users have incoming approvals and outgoing approvals, and you have to satisfy all where necessary. So I won't actually create the badge just for, um, I'll show you how you can create a badge. So you can, it'll go here. You can see it costs a little bit of badge credits. And then this is, we'll create the collection on chain and you could sign and submit with your wallet just like any other app or um, crypto interacting with your crypto wallet. Um, as you see here, you can see the actual JSON and um, you know verify the content hash and so on. So tons of neat features. Um, won't go into depth about all of them, but yeah, so that's kind of how you would create a badge. Similarly, you if you want to create an address list, it'll take you through that form as you see here. Um, we'll just you know walk you through this process. And lastly, um, also attestations. It's another simple form to create credentials, for example, like a diploma. Um, again, super easy to create, navigate, and so on. Um, right, and then it'll all sign, you can sign it all with your um, key pair. As needed. Right, it's taking a while to load, but I'll just leave it as that. My computer's getting super overheated with the screen recording and everything. Um, but yeah, so I know that was just a brief overview. There's tons of different features in the site with the form, with the um, Customization options, super easy to use. I keep reiterating, reiterating that, but I just um, think there's a lot of, it's really cool state-of-the-art stuff that we built. So yeah, if you, I'll leave the rest as an exercise for you if you want to go explore the different 
what you can do with it, just go to the Create tab and check out everything.